All right, uh, this is going to tackle again the issue of um, procreation and uh, antinatalism. Because this is actually the highest philosophical question. If you run into uh, philosophy, some people may have come across the um, phrase or the understanding that the highest philosophical question is whether or not to commit suicide. Uh, but really what that means is um, whether or not life should be lived or like the Stoics say to be or not to be. Um, but what's really implied there um, is whether or not to bear or to procreate or to impose life on others, we could say. This is antinatalism or the question of procreation or even pronatalism if you believe in imposing life on others because it's nature. Now, um, imposing life or procreation is going along with nature. Um, there's a Taoist proverb that says, those who go against the will of heaven follow the course of nature, while those who follow the will of heaven go against the course of nature. Because the course of nature is procreation. Um, creation and procreation are one and the same. To go along with creation is to go against the will of heaven. This is the um, what would be called considered the uh, highest wisdom, because they also say that people of the highest wisdom reverse the course and operation of nature, um, not just externally by not procreating, but also internally, which is um, the foundation of internal alchemy, which is a uh, reversing the energy flow in a way uh, back to its origin. Uh, which is pure, which is the true father and mother uh, versus the uh, physical, the carnal parents that we know. Now, I know in the Bible it says to honor thy father and mother, but um, strictly speaking, occultly speaking, they refer to the true father and mother because the uh, carnal father and mother, even as Jesus said, uh, you should actually hate. Um, not like I said, like you want to kill them or um, you really hate them out in the world but uh, it's an understanding that you despise this process of procreation or uh, we become against it because it's against the ways of heaven the will of heaven uh, if you really want to get uh, technical and I use that word heaven in a broad sense um, but it is against that um, now what the people have done especially with religion uh, because people we've always followed biological impulses and for the most part the vast majority of the population believe or they condone biology. What most people don't get is the kingdom of biology is actually the kingdom of Satan. This is the world of um, Satan, the creator of this world. It's in the Bible when they say the God of this world has blinded men. Uh, they're talking about this world. This world is but what? Biology. And um, this is Satan's kingdom, DNA, uh, replication. Um, all these monsters down here are surely not divine. Like I said, it's a vampiric world. Um, all these creatures down here, these uh, crawling creatures, these birds, these mammals, these reptiles, these amphibians. Um, they are not considered divine in the truest sense uh, for people who can really understand this. Um, like I said, the common people try to superimpose divinity on creation. This is their ignorance. This is their thoughtlessness of the common mentality. Um, if we can phrase it that way, I'm not trying to get away from, I know people hate, you know, you're judging, you're judging people, but I'm speaking about mentality here. And the common mentality tries to superimpose divinity on creation. So when they talk about heaven, um, they speak of, uh, they're trying to condone procreation as a way to bring someone into the world as a test to get into heaven, which is a lie. Um, because they're condoning the biological impulse, the biological function and process of procreation. Like I said, they're superimposing divinity on it. This is the ignorance. When you get into the real uh, studies, the real sagely wisdom, understanding of creation, it's the reverse of that. Um, it's not the condoning of nature. It's actually trying to reverse nature and cease and desist from nature. Because what is nature but birth and death? of the uh, experiencer. Uh, we can look at um, vistas of uh, 
the trees and the forest and the um, riverbanks and all this crap that people do uh, to try to save the world is beautiful. But when we talk about experience, it is but birth and death. It comes with uh, decay, decline, um, and death. Uh, birth does. But that's not to say birth is okay if it wouldn't be for death. Um, birth is the problem. Because birth is the source of all ills. There's a narrative in the uh, Hindu mythology about uh, Shiva, who was an ascetic, basically someone who just, uh, he just meditated all day and uh, smoked hemp. He was a bachelor and um, he had no children. Um, he wasn't uh, pro-creation. So uh, Brahma comes to him, the creator of this uh, fallen world, uh, this mistaken creator. And he asks him to uh, procreate to a bear child and uh shiva refuses he he shiva says well i'll procreate if the child would not have to go through redeath or it would um the child would be immortal in a certain sense brahma refuses um he just doesn't answer shiva back that's his answer because, like I said, they're against this whole process of birth and death. Um, it's not considered divine. Um, so when we look into um, these um, Hindu texts, there's a book by um, Wendy Doniger. It's called Imagining Creation. This is page 101. And they're talking about uh, birth. They're talking about the embryo. And they're speaking, um, this is a... Uh, talking about the embryo here it says um then it begins to remember its many previous existences and the will of rebirth and that depresses it and it tosses from side to side thinking i won't ever do that again as soon as i get out of this womb so they're talking about the baby how it's kicking and everything and they're, and they're like oh it's kicking oh it's a beautiful thing and there's no it's like being in a cage uh the embryo is like being in a cage could you imagine someone right now placing you in an embryo a sack <laughs> You'll want to get out. It won't be comfortable. It's not a beautiful thing. So continuing, it says, I will do everything I can so that I won't become an embryo again. It thinks in this way as it remembers the hundreds of miseries of birth that it experienced before in the power of fate. Then as time goes by, the embryo turns around, head down, and in the ninth or tenth month it is born. As it comes out, it is hurt by the wind of procreation. It comes out crying because it is pained by the misery in its heart. When it has come out of the womb, it falls into the unbearable swoon. It regains consciousness when it is touched by the air. Then Vishnu's deluding power of illusion assails him, and when his soul has been deluded by it, he loses his knowledge. As soon as the living creature has lost his knowledge, he becomes a baby. After that, he becomes a young boy, then an adolescent, then an old man, and then he dies, and then he is born again as a human. Thus he wanders on the will of rebirth like the bucket on the will of a well. So they're uh, looking at birth in the context of uh, rebirth, uh, sort of reincarnation. As I mentioned in the previous video, reincarnation is not literal. Uh, but we can see this as they're speaking from the point of view of the core self that is experiencing these uh, births through this process of procreation. So, as I mentioned, uh, basically, procreation is, from the will of heaven, from that point of view, it's a sin. Um, it's not condoned. Um, you're imposing life on someone. Uh, life is a burden. Uh, life is not a gift. It is a burden. See, and this is more of what people do. They're superimposing this divinity, this uh, moral implication on birth, which is the most, really the most immoral thing that you can do. Now, as an individual, um, we're but slaves, really. We're slaves to nature. Uh, we're slaves to the sexual impulse, uh, which leads to uh, birth. This is nature at its best. <laughs> we are slaves to nature. So procreation is but a function of nature. It, it, it takes the uh, individual mind or individual will or individual uh, insight to really criticize and critique and reverse this process. Um because the individual, I mean, technically, you really don't have much power. Um, this free will thing is a myth. Um, we're in the confines of nature. We're in the cage of nature. How much free will do you think you have, <laughs> given the circumstances? 
because with especially with law of attraction a lot of people are getting into um you're not going to manifest much i mean you're still trapped in this animal condition and uh what how good could a manifestation get in the context of animality in the context of the mud of nature what are you really looking to manifest and it's pretty much the same stuff people want it's going to be uh, a mate sex and some kind of wealth resources because you're in a deficient state you need the resources and um the need for a mate is also implied in your deficient state because you need 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 you're always needing something um this is suffering uh you know to even need a mate even lust even the uh, sexual hunger is a suffering it's a form of hunger um that needs to be satisfied so this is how nature works um and the course of nature is not divine so continuing with the uh, excerpt here from imagining creation life in the womb is physically ghastly as the embryo is squashed into a most uncomfortable position and it's disgusted by the pus feces urine and blood which fill the womb yeah detail is how they're describing how the womb really is this beautiful womb you're looking at but it is even more uncomfortable mentally chagrin at the memory of previous mistakes and despair at the realization that one will make them all again in this life too is what makes the baby cry as it enters the world damn and that chagrin means disgrace but they're saying the baby's crying <laughs> through all these uh we can call it the uh the the, the uh, akashic record or the storehouse consciousness of all the miseries of um existence Mae West once said that if she had her life to live over again she would make all the same mistakes but she would make them sooner the embryo fears that it too will make them again sooner or later and so we too recreate ourselves with no end and no beginning constantly getting there from here so from um, inception the um, the burdens of existence become apparent and there's a quote by Samuel Beckett that says uh, dropped out of the arse <laughs> the ass you know the first taste of shit because where we come from, we come from the lower regions of the body. Um, that's where we dropped out of the uh, genitalia, which is actually uh, disgustingly close to the uh, rectum and atus and the other uh, waste excretions. So, yeah, look at the metaphor on that. <laughs> look where we come from. So, yeah, first taste of the shit of uh, the world. Uh, you're encountering this world, and like they said, you're hit with the wind of procreation. Uh, this earthly air that takes away all true knowledge, which is not of this world, and turns you into a human. Uh, and like I mentioned, the human mind is considered to be devious. And it is devious. So it is said uh, before birth and creation, life is limitless. Um, because they mean real life. Uh, we call life, like I said, is called birth and death. Truly. Um, we don't know what life is. Because <laughs> uh, before birth and death, what we call life, there is no death. So before what we call life, there is no death. Um, once you create birth, you create death. They're one and the same. So um, once you can make that direct correlation, it makes more sense uh, what they're talking about. So the prenatal, um, this is from Taoist Yoga, the prenatal denotes the positive or spiritual nature existing before birth and postnatal means its negative or corrupt counterpart. So again, before birth, as I said, uh, is considered spiritual. This is the true spirituality. And uh, postnatal means a negative or corrupt counterpart, meaning creation, because uh, creation is nothing but procreation. It's corrupt. It's a negative state. This is from a Taoist yoga in the preface uh, for people who want to look up on this. And it follows the ordinary way of material life after birth. Uh, the spiritual, of course, the former being real and permanent, whereas the latter, um, postnatal birth, is corrupted and is illusory and transient. Now, as we always say, the world is an illusion, but we don't just stop there like I said with law of attraction uh, people understand this is an illusion uh, this is a result of a uh, mind um, it is a result of mind it's a result of a defiled mind and it is an illusion but it's not a neutral illusion it's a uh, an illusion is a deception which means it's false now which is false that means there's some trickery involved and so when you get into trickery you're getting into a negative illusion a corrupted illusion which is um, basically um, tricking 
what we could say is the light uh, for lack of a better term I'll just call it the light uh, it's, it's tricking the light this fallen world of dark embodiment tricks the light um, in order to so that it may go along with it and uh, fuel it um, for its own purposes this is what nature is and nature is considered the uh, inferior realm of desire basically where we um, occupy it's considered an inferior realm and I always point this out um, there's a uh, intelligent flat earther online uh, who uh, actually is one of the best channels in my opinion for um, flat earth um, research but he actually confronted me on this uh, gnosis issue because I know for a fact that people hate to hear um, the critique of creation because um, even people who think they're not Christian, you're still uh, programmed by this Christian meme of a creator being good or creation being divine or good. Even atheists uh, take this world to be, you know, at least even atheists will look at it as neutral or tolerable or just is. And they also see life as a gift in a sense. They believe in living life, um, which is just another uh, mass religious meme. Uh, and not just that, it's just, um, again, you're just going along with nature, which is the same as um, not thinking, because <laughs> that's what is irrational. Um, you know, you don't have to think to go along with nature. That's the whole point. Um, so how can it be divine? It's mindless um, going along with nature is. So he, sh he basically, um, you know, he agrees with the flat earth, but then he says, oh, you lost me on that. Uh, did you read the book of Ezra, all the prophecies predicted? And I told him, well, prophecy is a low level. Predicting that's predicting something that's going to happen in this um, fallen world matters not much to a person like me. Um, you're still stuck in this world. Um, then he tried to tell me, he tries to tell me how, well, you didn't, I have a document, um, about the Gnostics and their control by the white society, all this crap is like, um, well, first of all, in my opinion, I have, um, I'm looking into the philosophy and the insight. I'm not really into any groups. So if it makes sense to me, it makes sense. Gnosis goes beyond the Gnostics, whoever they're controlled by. And personally, any knowledge or wisdom telling you to get beyond this world and telling you the truth of creation is truthful in my opinion. Um, any philosophy telling you the world is good, it is divine, is bullshit, and it's a charlatan or it's just an ignorant mind. Um, because none of the people of the highest wisdom say shit like that. <laughs> Only the common people say that. Or people who just don't think about stuff like this. Uh, they just go along with it. Um, this is a debauchery. This is a scandal. This is a crime <laughs> of creation. And like I said, this uh, imposing of life, which is the most ignorant thing that uh, nature and its humans do and its other creatures, is the ultimate crime. Highly unnecessary. It's but a burden. And uh, it's only, uh, it only comes with toil and death. So, I understand a lot of people hate to look at creation in that way, but it is truthful. And it's undeniable. Um, it's... It's, a, it's sort of self-destructive in a way, um, how it operates. Um, and what people try to do is say, well, life is just about the experience. But um, there is no experience without its functions. And you have survival here. And the functions of nature and survivor are uh, just malficient. Uh, it's, it's war. Uh, nutrition is war. Um, there's a lot of pain and misery involved everywhere you turn. And without this pain and misery, there is no survival, which means there's no experience. So you have to look at what it's built on, not the notions you have in your head about what balloons you're going to chase next. <laughs> you know, what business you're about to build or this experience here. This means nothing. Um, that's that's part of the delusion and the ignorance. So um, that's the trickery. Like I said, it's an illusion. It's tricking something with these notions. And this is from uh, Practical Taoism. They're talking about once the umbilical cord is cut. Because like I said, they say before birth, um, life is limitless, real life. 
So they say, uh, then when you are born, the umbilical cord is cut. The point of real basic energy mass is under the navel. Day after day, the spirit goes out, energy shifts, and eventually you no longer preserve the breath that was there in the womb. Uh, meaning you become uh, mortal, basically, is what they're talking about. Um, you become of the world uh, once you contact this earthly air. The original breath, which is not of the nose and mouth, and really not of this world, is lost. Um, because they correlate everything back to breath. Um, so the original breath is limitless. And the breath that we know, that we consider breathing, is limited. And it keeps this uh, cycles of uh, procreation, birth, and death going ad infinitum. Peace. Let's point this out. Um, there's a, uh intelligent flat earther online uh, who uh, actually is one of the best channels, in my opinion, for uh, flat earth um, research. But he actually confronted me on this uh, gnosis issue because I know for a fact that people hate to hear um, the critique of creation because um, even people who think they're not Christian, you're still uh, programmed by this Christian meme of a creator being good or creation being divine or good. Even atheists uh, take this world to be, you know, at least even atheists will look at it as neutral or tolerable or just is. And they also see life as a gift in a sense. They believe in living life, um, which is just another uh, mass religious meme. Uh, and not just that, it's just, um, again, you're just going along with nature, which is the same as um, not thinking, because <laughs> that's what is irrational. Um, you know, you don't have to think to go along with nature. That's the whole point. Um, so how can it be divine? It's mindless um, going along with nature is. So. He sh he basically, um, you know, he agrees with the flatter, but then he says, oh, you lost me on that. Uh, did you read the book of Ezra, all the prophecies predicted? And I told him, well, prophecy is a low level. Predicting that's predicting something that's going to happen in this um, fallen world matters not much to a person like me. Um, you're still stuck in this world. Um, then he tried to tell me he tries to tell me how, well, you didn't I have a document. um about the Gnostics and their control by the white society, all this crap is like, um, well, first of all, in my opinion, I have, um, I'm looking into the philosophy and the insight. I'm not really into any groups. So if it makes sense to me, it makes sense. Gnosis goes beyond the Gnostics, whoever they're controlled by. And personally, any knowledge or wisdom telling you to get beyond this world and telling you the truth of creation is truthful, in my opinion. Um, any philosophy telling you the world is good, it is divine, is bullshit, and it's a charlatan or it's just an ignorant mind. Um, because none of the people of the highest wisdom say shit like that. <laughs> Only the common people say that. Or people who just don't think about stuff like this. Uh, they just go along with it. Um, this is a debauchery. This is a scandal. This is a crime <laughs> of creation. And like I said, this uh, imposing of life, which is the most ignorant thing that uh, nature and its humans do and its other creatures, is the ultimate crime. Highly unnecessary. It's but a burden and uh, suffering. It's a form of hunger um, that needs to be satisfied. So this is how nature works. Um, and the course of nature is not divine. So continuing with the uh, excerpt here from Imagining Creation. Life in the womb is physically ghastly, as the embryo is squashed into a most uncomfortable position and is disgusted by the pus, feces, urine, and blood which fill the womb. Yeah, details, how they're describing how the womb really is, this beautiful womb you're looking at. But it is even more uncomfortable mentally, chagrin at the memory of previous mistakes, and despair at the realization that one will make them all again in this life too, is what makes the baby cry as it enters the world damn and that chagrin means disgrace but they're saying the baby's crying <laughs> through all these uh we can call it the uh the the, the uh, akashic record or the storehouse consciousness of all the miseries of um existence may west once said that if she had her life to live over again she would make all the same mistakes but she would make them sooner 
the embryo fears that it too will make them again sooner or later and so we too recreate ourselves with no end and no beginning constantly getting there from here so from um, inception the um, the burdens of existence become apparent and there's a quote by Samuel Beckett that says uh, dropped out of the arse <laughs> the ass you know the first taste of shit because where we come from we come from the lower regions of the body um, that's where we dropped out of the uh, genitalia which is actually uh, disgustingly close to the uh, rectum and atus and the other uh, waste excretions so yeah look at the metaphor on that <laughs> look where we come from so yeah first taste of the shit of uh, the world uh, you're encountering this world and like they said you're hit with the wind of procreation uh, this earthly air that takes away all true knowledge which is not of this world and turns you into a human uh, and like I mentioned the human mind is considered to be devious and it is devious so it is said uh, before birth and creation life is limitless um, because they mean real life uh, we call life like I said is called birth and death truly um, we don't know what life is because <laughs> uh, before birth and death what we call life there is no death so before what we call life there is no death um, once you create birth you create death they're one and the same so um, once you can make that direct correlation it makes more sense uh, what they're talking about so the prenatal um, this is from Taoist yoga the prenatal denotes the positive or spiritual nature existing before birth so yeah look at the metaphor on that <laughs> look where we come from so yeah first taste of the shit of uh, the world uh, you're encountering this world and like they said you're hit with the wind of procreation uh, this earthly air that takes away all true knowledge which is not of this world and turns you into a human uh, and like I mentioned the human mind is considered to be devious and it is devious so it is said uh, before birth and creation life is limitless um, because they mean real life uh, we call life like I said is called birth and death truly um, we don't know what life is <laughs> Because uh, before birth and death, what we call life, there is no death. So before what we call life, there is no death. Um, once you create birth, you create death. They're one and the same. So um, once you can make that direct correlation, it makes more sense uh, what they're talking about. So the prenatal, um, this is from Taoist Yoga. Uh, the prenatal denotes the positive or spiritual nature existing before birth and postnatal means its negative or corrupt counterpart so again before birth as I said uh, is considered spiritual this is the true spirituality and uh, postnatal means a negative or corrupt counterpart meaning creation because uh, creation is nothing but procreation it's corrupt it's a negative state this is from a Taoist yoga in the preface uh, for people who want to look up on this and it follows the ordinary way of material life after birth. Uh, the spiritual, of course, the former being real and permanent, whereas the latter, um, postnatal birth, is corrupted and is illusory and transient. Now, as we always say, the world is an illusion. But we don't just stop there. Like I said, with law of attraction, uh, people understand this is an illusion. Uh, this is a result of a uh, mind. Um, it is a result of mind. It's a result of a defiled mind. And it is an illusion, but it's not a neutral illusion. It's a, an illusion is a deception, which means it's false. Now, when it's false, that means there's some trickery involved. And so when you get into trickery, you're getting into a negative illusion, a corrupted illusion, which is um, basically um, tricking what we could say is the light. Uh, for lack of a better term, I'll just call it the light. Uh, it's, it's tricking the light, this fallen world of dark embodiment tricks the light um, in order to so that it may go along with it and uh, fuel it um, for its own purposes this is what nature is and nature is considered the uh, inferior realm of desire basically where we um, occupy it's considered an inferior but it is even more uncomfortable mentally chagrined at the memory of previous mistakes 
and despair at the realization that one will make them all again in this life too is what makes the baby cry as it enters the world. Damn. And that chagrin means disgrace. But they're saying the baby's crying <laughs> through all these, uh, we can call it the, uh, the, the, the uh, Akashic record or the storehouse consciousness of all the miseries of um, existence. Mae West once said that if she had her life to live over again, she would make all the same mistakes, but she would make them sooner. The embryo fears that it too will make them again sooner or later. And so we too recreate ourselves with no end and no beginning, constantly getting there from here. So from um, inception, the, um, the burdens of existence become apparent. And there's a quote by Samuel Beckett that says, uh, dropped out of the arse, <laughs> the ass, you know, the first taste of shit. Because where we come from, we come from the lower regions of the body. Um, that's where we dropped out of the uh, genitalia, which is actually uh, disgustingly close to the uh, rectum and atus and the other uh, waste excretions. So, yeah, look at the metaphor on that. <laughs> look where we come from. So, yeah, first taste of the shit of uh, the world. Uh, you're encountering this world, and like they said, you're hit with the wind of procreation. Uh, this earthly air that takes away all true knowledge, which is not of this world, and turns you into a human. Uh, and like I mentioned, the human mind is considered to be devious. And it is devious. So it is said uh, before birth and creation, life is limitless um, because they mean real life. Uh, we call life, like I said, is called birth and death. Truly. Um, we don't know what life is. Because <laughs> uh, before birth and death, what we call life, there is no death. So before what we call life, there is no death. Um, once you create birth, you create death. They're one and the same. So, um, once you can make that direct correlation, it makes more sense, uh, what they're talking about. So the prenatal, um, this is from Taoist yoga. Uh, the prenatal denotes the positive or spiritual nature existing before birth and postnatal means it's negative or corrupt counterpart. So again, before birth, as I said, uh, is considered spiritual. This is the true spirituality and uh, postnatal means a negative or corrupt counterpart. Meaning creation, because uh, creation is nothing but procreation. It's corrupt. It's a negative state. This is from a Taoist yoga in the preface uh, for people who want to look up on this. And it follows the ordinary way of material life after birth through this process of procreation. So, as I mentioned, uh, basically procreation is from the will of heaven. From that point of view, it's a sin. Um, it's not condoned. Um, you're imposing life on someone. Uh, life is a burden. Uh, life is not a gift. It is a burden. See, and this is more of what people do. They're superimposing this divinity, this uh, moral implication on birth, which is the most, really the most immoral thing that you can do. Now, as an individual, um, we're but slaves, really. We're slaves to nature. Uh, we're slaves to the sexual impulse, uh, which leads to uh, birth. This is nature at its best <laughs> we are slaves to nature so procreation is but a function of nature it, it, it takes the uh, individual mind or individual will or individual uh, insight to really criticize and critique and reverse this process um, because the individual I mean technically you really don't have much power um, this free will thing is a myth um, we're in the confines of nature we're in the cage of nature how much free will do you think you have, <laughs> given the circumstances? Because with, especially with law of attraction, a lot of people are getting into. Um, you're not going to manifest much. I mean, you're still trapped in this animal condition. And uh, what? How good could a manifestation get in the context of animality, in the context of the mud of nature? What <laughs> are you really looking to manifest? And it's pretty much the same stuff people want. It's going to be uh, a mate sex and some kind of wealth resources because you're in a deficient state you need the resources and um the need for a mate is also implied in your deficient state because you need 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 you're always needing something um this is suffering uh you know to even need a mate even lust even the uh, sexual hunger is a suffering it's a form of hunger 
um, that needs to be satisfied. So this is how nature works. Um, and the course of nature is not divine. So continuing with the uh, excerpt here from Imagining Creation. Life in the womb is physically ghastly. As the embryo is squashed into a most uncomfortable position and it's disgusted by the pus, feces, urine, and blood which fill the womb. Yeah, detail is how they're describing how the womb really is. This beautiful womb you're looking at. But it is even more uncomfortable mentally, chagrin at the memory of previous mistakes, and despair at the realization that one will make them all again in this life too, is what makes the baby cry as it enters the world. Damn. And that chagrin means disgrace. But they're saying the baby's crying <laughs> through all these, uh, we can call it the, uh, the, the, the uh, Akashic record or the storehouse consciousness of all the miseries of um, existence. 